Deja, I think, is one of the most talented singers to uh, come our way in a very long time. In terms of Chicago, I think she's probably the, the most important female artist to come out of Chicago since Minnie Ripperton. And uh, we're developing her career and we're about to uh, launch her out into the entertainment stratosphere. I'm a songwriter, so words are important to me. To express the thoughts or feelings or emotion with a canvas to draw a picture with words. But then I realized that those words, you know, those words, it is all oh, so easy. It was lost, and now I have to find it. It was Friday. January 1st, 1999, New Year's Day. I was in Compton, California at my father's and law's house for Christmas and New Year's Day. I had attended some business meetings over the last past week and another in Chicago. I was going to visit with the quality E, undeniable entertainment, a fledgling company owned by Frank Thomas, a star watch sex ball player, which I am the president. Also, late afternoon Monday, I was scheduled to a trustees meeting with Marvin L. Wines Academy Performing Arts in Detroit. I am a, a board member. Over a, a last year, though, my marriage is in trouble. I blame me and only me. So we listed a service, counseling service. All of my thoughts, my soul and heart, I opened up because I wanted to make my marriage work. At that time, is 15 years old. Like any marriage, I had, we had some bumps and bruises. Well, a lot. But we had good times, too. We worshiped at our church in Oak Park. We raised our daughter, my stepdaughter. We have friends. We travel the world. We have box tickets with opera, symphonies, plays. We dine the best restaurant. We have a home, a, a mansion, really, and a fancy cars. I want to make my marriage work. In November, in 1998. I had some, an appointment and a seminar in, in, in uh, London. It was 10 days. So I asked with her, you want to come? And I, he smiled and said, yes. And we scheduled in January some appointments and my label and the cinema art in cans and she was coming too. We were mending our relationship, our marriage, I thought. But it is New Year's Day. 
I was scheduled to fly out to Chicago tomorrow, but a storm was Corfast, really a blizzard. So I have to go back in today. So I got my, so I was scheduled with the five back, not once, not twice, but three times. Maybe my body is telling me it's something wrong. But I, I didn't listen, so I boarded the plane. It was 10 p.m. My wife stayed behind to visit with her family, and my stepdaughter is away to college. At Chicago Midway Airport, I got my badge and go outside to a taxi. It was low but very cold. I waited, I waited, I waited. I lead us an hour. Finally, another passenger shared a taxi. The snow dragged to a full blown blizzard. I arrived in my house and settled in, unpacked my luggage. I slept. But then I woke up a little later because there's something wrong with my body and my mind. So I reach over the phone and pick it up the receiver and I ask myself, what's this? What's this? I didn't recognize the actual phone or what it is. I keep picking up the phone and putting into my ear and then sending it back down. Again, I pick it up and then back down. Constantly, I want to know what it is. I guess I dozed off. And then again, I pick it up and then back down. But this time, somebody called. It's my wife. I probably said, Hello? Or something like that. And she asked, What's the matter? I mumbled something into the phone. Of course, she's still in L.A. Her father gets on the phone and said, Just talk to me. My wife calls the next door neighbor. She said, There's something wrong with Paul. Can you check and see what's going on? Uh-oh, somebody is knocking at my front door. So I got up and slowly walked down the stairs. It's my next door neighbor. My security alarm is on, so I discarded it. I opened the front door. My next door neighbor said, Sit, oh sit, just sit down. I did. She covered me with one of my coats. Oh, Paul is having a stroke. <laughs> there is a very short time that I can remember after that, maybe two seconds or so at the ambulance. And then God said to me, Hold on. Time out. Come here. I want to talk to you. And so my journey began. Hmm. This is heaven. Hmm. There's no space or time, just heaven. No dawn or dust. No dawn or dust. No light or darkness. No light or darkness. No pain. No pain, no pain, just peace and love. I have no voice, no voice, but I can understand. And God said to me, You didn't listen to me, so you're going to listen now. So obviously, I listened, and God said to you me, You have a job to do. 
so do it. You're going back to Earth because it's not time. Now, it's going to hurt, but it will pass. There's an angel, and she will guide you. Her name is Odessa. Odessa, that's my mother. God sent me back to, to Earth. I'm in the hospital at that point, West Suburban Hospital in Oak Park. I am in intensive care. I remember the room faintly. The room was isolated, very dark with no windows, no chairs, just a bed and a good equipment. The doctors ordered some sediment. I slept. They revealed that I had an ischemic ABC of a stroke. A, a lot of glucose and I had a stroke. And the inability to understand or formerly speech, aphasia. One of my affected brains was dead. My instrument, my voice, lungs, diaphragm, tracheal, central, superfluctal system, and our articulators was lost. My vocabulary, the words of experience, throughout childhood up to the stroke. The tools to communicate was lost. The articulation, lips, jaws, and other organs to making sounds was lost. Semantics, the means of words was lost. Syntax, the principles and rules to constructing sentences was lost. The, the synthesization, speaking clearly and precisely was lost. The sequence as, as the numbers in the alphabet was lost. The rhythm, the pulse, the beat was lost, but my intelligence is intact. My voice, I have to learn my instrument, my human voice. West Suburban Hospital released me and then the ambulance transferred to Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago. I stayed for a month. At the stay, my wife visits me and said, with a weak tone, retire, sell, why? Some years back, we talked about our future. One of the plans was to retire and move to Hawaii. So I said to myself, this is it, this is it. I was, I was 27 years old. Let me see with myself. Let me see. Say it. Wash, call, wash, call, wash, call. Okay. Toothbrush. Say it. Toothbrush, toothbrush, toothbrush. Man, this is t tedious. Okay. Toilet paper, say it. Toilet paper, toilet paper. <sighs> At the office in Ch Ch Chicago, I was cleaning my desk and undeniable. One of my employees said, my artist 
Deja Gomez and her label was in rotation in BBC in London. That's major. And another, another entourage of singing group was charging in Billboard. That's major too. My effort is not in vain. My plan is two years to blossom. Well, two years is now. But the record company didn't follow up. Thomas and their manager decided to disband the company and just focus baseball. I recurred my, I continue my recovery. I've received some basic communication and physical help with the Rehabilitation Institute in Riverbrook. One of the employees was Edie Babbitt. Six years with basic basic conversations, six years with minimal cues at home and community care service, six years of simple meal preparations, light home management, and emergency situations. Six years of all the activities of daily living, I'm sorry. Six years was simple management conversation. All of my goals was met, but it's a long way to go. We, have, we found a home in Maui. Mr. Wilson, how are you? Said Walk Chichaki, my speech therapy in Maui. Walk is a very simple man with a lot of knowledge of my condition. His approach of therapy include three basic steps. One, auditory comprehension precedes speech. Two, speaking through reading. Three, precede writing. It's all beginning to make sense. With that concept, it takes time. I also, I realize I have to slow down with my speech. If not, my words will not transform with words. In June, 2004, my wife handed an envelope. At that time, I can't read per se. It was locked up in my brain, so I, but I have to slow down with all of the connections, piece by piece. But they said they said what I understand. Her attorneys said. They want, she wants to divorce. I didn't see it. Why? We had a good life. I worked hard with my family. With a partner, I can practice my speech, and she can do everything she wants, and I will support her. 
but I didn't I did fight it with my marriage. But and the same goes to uh, dance partner. It takes two to tango. I don't know why she wants to have a divorce. One of the attorneys said, she's faking it. I said, faking it? Ha! Huh. I, have to have, I have to be alone and strong. Just friends where lovers we used to be. And that's so hard for me to see Cause I still remember how it used to be I still remember how it used to be I still remember how it used to be In spring, my wife and I got a divorce. I was starting a new chapter. Apropos, one of the songs that I wrote for tourism was Calling Me Home, Chicago. In September 2005, I found a nice condo in Chicago. It was across the street at Lake Michigan and Soldier Field. I guess I like the water and I can resume my jogging in the spring, summer, and fall. Now, winter though, no. Why? You ask me, because my stroke did not affect me. It did, it did affect me because my stroke didn't also gave me aphasia. It, it, it also affected me physically, my extremities, my hands and foot. It's subject of to do movement and temperature changes, especially cold weather. We have six lobes frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe, limbic lobe, insulin cordac with a stroke. My carotid lobe was affected. The frontal lobe is located behind the frontal lobe. The carotid lobe affects sensory information from various parts of the body. They contain the primary sensory cortex, which controls sensations like pain, feeling either hot or cold, touch, etc. They make sure that we know which way is up. They keep us from bumping into things. I have another school now that will help me to relearn speaking, listening, reading, and writing. I join again the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. I took classes and I graduated. It is... Easter 2007. I was going to go out to church and then my Aunt Carrie's house for New Year's um, Easter Sunday. I got up, 
and that feeling, that aura, a seizure was coming. And my right eye was spiraling, that tiny spark spiraling. It got bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's going haywire. So I called 991 and my brother, Herb. But I said, no more. No more. I was tired because I was hooked with all that prescription drugs of the seizures. I was tired because I was affecting my day. I was tired because, you know, I was dizzy and I, I can't think straight. I was tired of affecting my memory. Enough is enough. I want my life back. So I said, no more. No more. So, but the smile was still there. And I said, again, no more. That spiral was just, uh, just getting out of control. So emphatically, I said, no more. And suddenly, the smile, my right eye, disappeared. The, the uh, ambulance arrived. And I said, uh, th 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 thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm fine, I'm, I'm fine. I called her and said, hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, I said, that's fine. So I laid down for a lap. I didn't go out to church because the service was over. I did go out with my aunt home and spend the night. I decided that, that night I don't need the destruction drugs, only the natural way eating right, exercise, and lots of sleep. I think the restriction drugs in my body was fighting. And so the restriction drugs, they lost. A side note, in the winter, In the winter, 2004, and January 2004, five, I had two seizures. It was because I was hydrated, or a lack of sleep, or flu. Well, I'm back to the description, but this time, this time, I am in control, period. I work hard with my memory seven years ago without the description, and I can retain the memory. It was affecting me, so it's now it's going to a minimum. Less is more. I had an, an annual appointed with my, my urologist, and I will demand to lower the amount. I am in control. One day at aphasia conversation group, we were watching a video on the screen, there was a, a woman, and I said, man, she's beautiful, ooh. You know, so that all us Jews is firing up. But, but I was focused just to talk, bring together some words and hopefully a sentence, not a prayer paragraph, but just one or two sentences that makes sense. But I said to myself, I have to go out. I'm single, so I have to stay. What do I say? With an iPhone and the telephone, I will figure it out. You know, when the iPhone, they can dictate the advice, and they will write it down, what I'll say, and I can edit and change it 
and memorize what I say and send it out, potentially a date. Meg, never go. I'm back to the dating business. <laughs> but it's going to take time. I know that. I have to reach back to my, my 20s and 30s. What do I say? When I say, hi, I'm Paul. I have aphasia, so bear with me. Uh, chit -chat. My vocabulary is growing, but I, oh, I have to, to hear, hear some lines first. Over the last song, I, I can't uh, comfortable now. Before, sometimes I didn't introduce myself, but lately I will say, hi, what's your name? I like your hair. Maybe go at an hour or dinner or lunch. Well, there's an attractive woman I was seeing, so I don't know. I don't know. This is me. This is who I am. The old Paul is a memory, but it's still intact. The new Paul, I have to relearn the good memory. Discard the path, but hold on the path. I'm excited with the new neurons. We're talking, conversing with the new technology, synapses. I have to still learn new, to new pathways, new experience, new people, new ways to navigate in my brain. When I talk with other people, I'm learning what I'll say and just, just small, large or small. I know there's no magic wand, no voodoo situation, and voila, I'm healed. There's no pills or special water combination and sleep, and I wake up and so, so I'm, I'm healed. There's aphasia, there's no steps to follow, and presto, I'm healed. It is hard work. Now, with aphasia, it's going to take time to heal. There's no set time. The brain sets the time, not me. And they'll take their own time. The brain can't rush it. So, so it's going to take time for life. I know that, but I'm up 
to it. Those things that I can't do, like mathematics, a calculia, writing, a graphia, object normally, agnosia, names, catch phrase, breathing, or talking fluently, language, aphasia. I have to slow down my memory, and they will understand and learn. So. The catchphrases will come out fluently. Through it all, with 18 years of practice, <coughs> patience, my instrument is found. My vocabulary is found. The articulation is found. Semantics is found. Syntax is found. The enunciation is found. The sequence is found. And the rhythm is found. Yeah. Uh, well, I had a meeting with God. Okay. 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 Now, they said I had a stroke, but, you know, I had a meeting with God. Now, this is the, um, um, in the earth, though, I had a, a stroke. So I'm living with that. And, uh, but uh, life, 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 uh, it goes on, okay? And uh, every day I wake up and I'll concentrate. I'll practice, and uh, all the things that I've done, uh, I have to do it all over again. But that's fine. I mean, that's that's fine, you know. That's fine. And um, uh, every day, I will I will practice, okay, and live life. Well, uh, again. Yes.